Okay, unit uh, number 20, questions 64 to uh, 67. So just um, glancing through it, underlining a few things. Um, uh, each factor, oh, actually a cofactors, okay. So, uh, first question, 64, which one of the following is a precursor for... Um, and it even defines a precursor, a substance that is converted to uh, factor 5. So we look in the diagram, and uh, of course they did mention the factor 5 is a cofactor, but uh, I just don't think that's very important. But we look at where factor 5 is there, and there's a little plus sign next to it. But there's nothing making factor 5. There's only one arrow that is going to factor 5, and that arrow has a negative sign above it, meaning that um, using the scale below, meaning that active protein C has a negative feedback on factor 5. But we don't see any chemicals or, 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 or leading to factor 5 which would be creating factor 5. I'll give you an example. Um, let's see. Well, yeah, we, we, we have um, fibrinogen going to make a fibrin clot. You could see fibrinogen making um, fibrin. You know, thrombin influences that. But, um, you know, we see factor 9 going to factor 9A, uh, influenced by factor uh, 11A. So we do see things that are going on where something does go for something, but we see no precursor to factor 5 demonstrated here. And so the answer would be um, uh, D, which is neither A nor B uh, nor C. None of them are precursors. Which one of the following is the most likely role of factor 8? So uh, let's take a look at factor 8. Okay, so we see factor 8 and there's a little plus sign next to factor 8. And um, the last sentence above that says, in the figure, the involvement of factor 5 or factor 8 is signaled by a plus sign, uh, plus factor 6. And, and above that sentence, it says they're cofactors, each of which helps another factor do its job. So it's clear that factor 5 helps factor 10a, uh, that's Roman numeral 10a, um, because the plus sign is so close to the arrow going down from factor 10a. And factor 8, therefore, is um, influencing and, and helps, is the cofactor for factor 9a. So we look for that, um, and uh, that's Andrew choice A, and um, that's 65. So question 66. From when the wound surface contact begins, which one of the following is likely to first occur after the longest period of time? Wow, what a way to ask a question. <laughs> which is the first occur after the longest period of time? Well, that means um, which process occurs last <laughs> after the longest period of time? Which one occurs last? And in fact, it, it's saying that when you bleed and you just start uh, the clotting process, okay, because uh, wound surface contact begins, when you first start the clotting process, what step is going to occur last? And of, of course, uh, the, the last thing that you want to happen when you just have a wound and, and is bleeding and you're just starting a clot, the last thing that you want is for the clot not to be formed so you want it to be formed and you want it to be formed that's going to take a, a positive feedback where things are pushing forward um, it's going to take a fibrinogen going to fibrin clot uh, which is a we want that to happen it's going to um, take uh, the act activation of uh, of um, would you have activation of protein C? Well, activation of protein C, that has a negative impact on factor 5, and it also has a negative impact on uh, factor 8. So activation of protein C will slow uh, things down, but even worse, because activation of C will slow things down, but worse would be the effect of negative feedback, will be that things are actually stopping. You don't want that to happen when the wound just opens up or is just starting the process of clotting. 
You want negative feedback to begin when the, the wound is near c completion, nearly everything is uh, organized and it's not bleeding anymore. Now you're ready to have negative feedback step in to make sure that the body doesn't overdo it. You know, uh, you don't want positive feedback out of control, uh, so to speak. So um, 66, the answer would be B. 67. In biological regulatory mechanisms, positive feedback, um, okay, is more useful mechanism than negative feedback? Well, definitely not. In fact, positive feedback is the reason, the source of, of many, if not most, human diseases. Um, there's so many, especially immune diseases in humans uh, that just get out of control because of uh, positive feedback mechanisms. And uh, even some, some deaths by infections uh, is exactly that. Is the body overdoing the reaction to something that, that really wasn't so bad to begin with? Um, B, usually occurs in the absence of negative feedback. Well, we've just had a passage that showed, you know, positive feedback, the body pushing something to occur, uh, but there's checks and balances so that it doesn't get out of control with some negative feedback loops as well. So no, uh, B is not correct. Is unlikely to occur in the absence of negative feedback. That is correct. Otherwise, uh, I mean, things would go out of control. Things... Look, negative feedback helps to keep the body in homeostasis, helps to keep um, uh, internal stability, whereas um, positive feedback uh, can result in rapid loss of internal stability. And so, of course, that's uh, quite uh, dangerous. And uh, the last one is likely to occur in all the same pathways as negative feedback. Well, uh, no, and, and we've seen uh, here that there's uh, some pathways where the positive feedback was operating or the negative feedback were operating uh, on its own. So um, uh, that's, uh, that's it for this one. If you, um, if you wanted to read up on positive and negative feedback in the book, um, the, the Gold Standard uh, GAMSAT, you can go to six. Uh, 6.3.6 .6 and 6.3.7 and uh, blood clots is uh, bio 7.5 it's just background reading there was no previous knowledge required to answer any of these questions and uh, and if you want to uh, look at some uh, metabolism and pathways they're in 4.4 uh, to 4.10 uh, just to get used to seeing those kinds of uh, pathways